Hail Satan. <laughs> Sorry. Way too many drugs. Okay. Uh, I'm here to review Dark Sun Shattered Lands. Yeah, I know my face also looks a bit banged up. Don't ask. Okay. Dark Sun Shattered Lands. Uh, first of all, it is for sale on GOG. G -g 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 uh, they're selling it as a bundle, actually. You get Dark Sun Shattered Lands, or Dark Sun 1, and Dark Sun Wake of the Ravager, a.k.a. Dark Sun 2. Uh, and if you wait for a sale, you get them very cheap. Or you could get it on uh, any Abandonware website. Um, and I wouldn't judge you if you did so, because uh, ownership... That's one of those games where who owns it is kind of hazy, so whatever. But I personally, I like buying my games whenever I can, so I, I purchased it on GOG. And so this review... Is for a game, uh, Dark Sun Shattered Lands, and I'm repeating myself. Uh, okay, so Dark Sun Shattered Lands, in my opinion, is the oldest um, Dungeons and Dragons game that's actually completely playable, enjoyable, finishable, pleasurable um, for regular video game. RPG enthusiasts, uh, whereas, you know, there are, there are older D&D games. Um, here, let me show you some screenshots. Ooh, look, production value. Okay, screenshots. So this is from the, uh, this is the loading screen. Uh, and just keep in mind, the in-game actually looks less, pix less pixelated and better than this. Uh, if you do the proper DOS box settings, it actually doesn't look quite as blurry. Um, or, or uh, the, the, the textures and resolution is actually way better if you're not an idiot, is what I'm saying. But this is what the game looks like. Um, there are older D&D games, okay? This is a screenshot from Dark Sun 2, but it's the same engine. This is also Dark Sun 2, Dark Sun 2. Okay, this is Dark Sun 1. This is what the minimap looks like. Uh, there are older D&D games, the, the gold box games and stuff. And some people are going to hate me for this, but I'm sorry. Um, they're, they're really rough to enjoy, okay? you got to be super hardcore. Okay, this is, this is Dark Sun Shattered Lands again. This is in the sewers. Um, so, yeah, because they're first person, um, and it's like hex-based movement, they're really, really hard to enjoy. Dark Sun... Is, is actually very similar to Baldur's Gate in the way it plays and controls and the way that you see the game. Uh, and so because it's 2D and top-down, isometric sprites, pre-rendered, drawn backgrounds, uh, it actually aged way, way better. Way better. The combat, in many ways, is actually more enjoyable than in the Infinity Engine games, in my opinion, because uh, it's turn-based as opposed to real-time with pause. This is also in the sewers. Not, no, no spoilers or anything. Now, even though like things are pixely, you can see uh, the, the, there's a lot of love put into, every, into the nuances of the art. Like you can see the blood trails in this scene, and it's actually it's a very dark, grim, and gruesome uh, game. Uh, and, like you can see that like, here's some beds, and there's a chest, and by the way, a lot of this stuff is interactive. Anyway, so yeah, it, it's ten dollars or five dollars for each game. Um, but if you get it on sale, uh, it's usually, it usually you get it at least 50% off, uh, if not 75% off. So $5 for both or two fifty for both, I believe is, uh, very, very respectable. Um, but again, you could get Abandonware. Uh, the DOS box version is fully functional. It, you, you, if you want, you play with the settings just a tiny bit to uh, basically enhance the resolution. And, like, you see people, like a lot of YouTube Let's Players, they play these old games on DOSBox, and they have, like, their, their crap on the side because they played in the original aspect. Don't do that, okay? Come on. If you do the settings in DOSBox right, you can have it widescreen, 1920 by 1080, full screen. It looks great. Uh, it actually looks better than it did back in the day. Uh, the, the fonts look amazing, and nothing is pixelated or blurry. Also, if you're gonna get the, uh, if you're gonna play Dark Sun, and you get it from GOG, make sure you run the uh, sound uh, detection 
the, the, the sound setup, which, which will be in the install folder, because even though it's ready to play after you, you uh, download it from uh, GOG, they didn't quite do the sound correct, so the music sounds a little flat, a little shite. So you want to run the, the sound setup and, and say Sound Blaster 16 Pro, uh, and then let's just, just hit on the uh, recommended everything, and then just hit OK, and then this, the music actually sounds much better. The only hiccup when playing Dark Sun Shattered Lands on DOSBox is that it has slowdown issues. Uh, but all you, all, all you need to do is speed up the... Um, the uh, what's it called? The uh, the skip, the frame skip. It's, it's Control F12 hotkey on DOSBox. It does make the game move a little faster, but the combat's turn-based, so it doesn't matter. Only for things that pop up and then fade on their own, so you gotta read it fast. Will it affect anything that matters? Everything else doesn't matter. Doesn't affect anything. Um, so you don't notice that the game's running faster, basically skipping like a frame. It really doesn't affect anything that matters. Uh, and it, your character does move faster when you're running around out of combat, but that's a good thing. Who wants to run slow? Um, and aside from that slowdown, which you can you can fix, no problems. I had no bugs, no crashes. Um, it, it, I mean, I, I was really scared to play it. Because uh, it's something that I put off for years, and I had read that oh, it's kind of buggy. Um, there are some some glitches and issues, and there's a game-breaking bug where you can never finish the game. But um, it, was, it is fully patched with the last official patch, and maybe God did some stuff, or maybe I was just lucky. But I had no issues, and I I want you to know I beat the entire game. I played through the entire game. This is a full playthrough review. Uh, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I loved it. <laughs> okay? I loved it. It was so much fun. Like, I tried to play the, 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 the Gold Box games, and maybe if I played them when I was a kid, it, I, it, would, it would be playable. Because I'm sure they were good for their time, but I'm sorry. No. I tried to play Ravenloft and Menzo Berenzin, and those were a little better, but uh, it's just... When it's when it's when it's first person and they're trying to make it 3D and and you got the the freaking grid movement not grid but like the step movement, uh, in my opinion, Dark Sun not only is fantastic, but it's the oldest Dungeons and Dragons game that really anyone can enjoy. So if you like RPGs and you like D and D, you really really should play it. Don't be scared because it's old. Like, there's a few-minute adjustment period when you first start playing for your eyes to adjust to the resolution. And after that, you don't notice. Um, and there was, the, like, I didn't need a walkthrough. I, I, I completed the game without a walkthrough. I didn't need any cheats or tips. Uh, for character creation, you should look up a guide because... It has a weird XP system where um, there, there, it, there's no uh, XP cap. There's a level cap. So you want to multi-class as much as possible. Single class is like a negative. Plus in Dark Sun, druids are actually way more powerful than clerics. Which if you'd like play Baldur's Gate, you would assume it's different. But no, in Dark Sun, druids kick ass. Clerics kind of suck because of the way that the game was created. So if you want to do some research before you create your party, otherwise you might gimp yourself. And in my opinion, I found the game a little easy, but I am really good at RPGs. So I, there's a difficulty slider, which uh, just makes mobs do more damage or, or something like that. I maxed it out. So this is my first time ever playing through it, and I beat it on max difficulty slider. And the only problems I had was the final fight, which was difficult, but it should be difficult. And when I was fighting a certain enemy, I won't spoil, that was had certain immunities, um, I had to try and figure out how to, how to actually do damage to them. That was kind of hard. The story in the game is actually really interesting, really good, well written, and I liked it because it was very dark and grim. Um, I like my games dark, grim, and not not depressing, but I, I like the world to be dark. And Dark Sun is definitely that. I mean, the Dark Sun universe is known for being dark. And also, 
Dark, playing Dark Sun was a treat because the Dark Sun universe was kind of abandoned uh, uh, by Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, whatever. So there's only been two Dark Sun video games ever made, and, and Dark Sun Shadowlands is one of them. So it's really nice to play in the Dark Sun universe. And if you're a super huge nerd, you could always try reading the Dark Sun novels before you play the game so you know more about the universe. But it's not necessary, and... The game does do a good job of filling, of like, of giving you a general idea of what what the universe is like. But I still think that if you really want to go full hardcore, uh, read some of the books, which are pretty good. But anyway, um, the story is great. There's no voice work. Uh, I mean, come on, this game—they didn't really have that back then. But the music, even though it was like MIDI. I actually really like the music. Some of the songs in particular were really good. Uh, and uh, sound effects? Sound effects suck. I ain't gonna lie. The sound effects are trash. But they're not, like, painful to the point where you want them to stop. It's just they're nothing special. Uh, animations, like for spell effects and stuff, are nothing special, but they have a unique charm. Graphics, 2D, very simplistic, but they're hand they're drawn and like the backgrounds there's a lot of love, a lot of little detail put into the environments, little things, little beds and, and like campfires and like bodies and skeletons and blood trails to, to really like fill out the background. It's not like just just open and empty. Um, there's there's multiple solutions for many of the quests, something that modern RPGs could learn a thing or two about. Because, you know, one of the downsides to adding voice acting to games is that they had to cut down on dialogue options because you could, it's dialogue wasn't just writing, now you got to pay someone to say it. So there's a lot of dialogue options, and there are multiple ways to complete quests. And while there's really only one ending, you have to be a good guy, there's a lot of options in different quests where you could be bad and you could kill people that are nice. There are definitely some crazy, nasty things you can do, which is really cool. And the the story itself, there's some really depressing shit. You know, this game deals with slavery. It deals with cannibalism. Um, we get, we get, it has some, some light, uh, subtle rape references. Not really rape-rape uh, because, you know, that... That's one of those things that even back in the day, the day they were kind of scared about. But slavery is like everywhere. Uh, and the idea of freedom and wanting to be free. Um, and uh, cannibalism, starvation. Uh, it, it, again, this was a big, big theme. And the idea of uh, desperation and, and hopelessness and madness and insanity. Uh, demons and, and selling your soul and all this kind of stuff. Really, really cool, st and and just all like a lot of a lot of the characters and stuff. It's everything was really dark. I loved it. There's nothing funny. Fuck funny. Uh, and I also, you fight a lot of really cool classic D Dungeons and Dragons type creatures. I'm not. Gonna, I don't want to spoil, but you fight some cool stuff. You know, it's not goblins and gnolls, okay, or orcs. There ain't no goblins, gnolls, or orcs in this game. There's the more more unique kind of. D, D creatures, but they don't make up any D, D creatures. There's just more exotic stuff that you don't normally see. There's psionics. I'm not really a psionics fan, but it's implemented pretty well. And if I know some people love psionics, so that's cool. If you're familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, like second edition rules, you will understand everything. Uh, it, it's very basic, very straightforward. Um, there is magical gear, magical items, but it's rare. It's, it's more like Baldur's Gate 1 as opposed to Baldur's Gate 2, which I actually like. So when you find something magical, you get so excited. And there's definitely some really cool magical gear to find. Uh, and while like you can't right-click on, on magical gear to get like a backstory, like in Baldur's Gate, there's an NPC that you could find, and if you show him your stuff, he'll tell you a story. So it's like Baldur's Gate, only done more legit because how would your characters know it's kind of like instead of casting identify you find a dude like a, who tells you the story of every item and some of the stories are really cool so you do get that and a lot of people love the little stories that you could read about oh what is what is this backstory of this magical pair of boots so that's in the game um you just you have to find the dude you don't just get it from clicking on the item and it's just great it's just great 
Uh, I, I, I'm trying to think of what is the downside. There are some spells that are, are brokenly overpowered, but that's like what game doesn't have those? And um, there are some abilities that don't work quite right, so they're kind of worthless. What game doesn't have those? And oh, there's no romance. You can't have sex. That is a downside. Like I, I don't need to see titties, but it's nice to have an option. Like like I'm fine with fade to black. But I just like knowing that my character got laid because, you know, for me, RPGs are a power fantasy, and also I like realism. And it's always weird when nobody tries to have sex with your character. I don't know, maybe I'm weird for expecting that. I play too much Fallout and The Witcher, but it's just about completionism and believability. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to whack off or anything. Again, I'm, like just just fade to black is fine. So I was I always I always find it weird in an RPG, especially one aimed at adults, when you you can't get laid, you can't even go on a date. So that that was something that I noticed. Um, it is it is kind of open world. It is 2D, and and it's not like there's no there's no fast. Well, there is fast travel. I ain't gonna there's like. I don't want to spoil. There is sort of fast travel, but for the most part, you just wander zone to zone. So you kind of get lost, maybe you get confused. But that's part of the charm, which I enjoy. Um, and it's very interesting playing like a 2D, top-down-ish, isometric kind of open-world game where you just go from one map to another. Like, normally, games that are open-world are first-person. Uh, so I thought that was very interesting. The game length, very respectable, but not crazy long. It's not super long. Some people hate super long, but it's not super short either. I tried to make it last a while. I don't know how long exactly it took me to beat it. Uh, let's say somewhere between 20 to 50 hours. I know it's a big range, but I wasn't really paying attention. My point is, it's not so short that you feel cheated or, or it feels like the game was rushed, but it's not so long that you feel like you have to set time aside and like, okay, this month I'm playing Dark Sun. If you like RPGs, old school RPGs, if you like turn-based combat, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, like like if you hear Dungeons and Dragons, that that's a plus for you, not like a whatever. Then th there is no reason you shouldn't play it, and and that that's the biggest point I want to bring across, is that it's something you could play and enjoy today. As somebody in looking for a game to play today. Not like, oh, I'm going to play it just because it's D&D. &D and I want to say I did it even though it's really old and I'm going to suffer. No, you could play it and actually enjoy it today. Uh, I know I did. And uh, yeah, so I, I that's my review of Dark Sun Shattered Lands. If you like, if you enjoyed playing Baldur's Gate... If you enjoyed Divinity, Original Sin, Tyranny, Pillars of Eternity, you don't mind a little bit of old school looking stuff. If you actually enjoy Dungeons and Dragons lore, if you even know what Dark Sun is, and you haven't played Dark Sun Shattered Lands, you need to play it, dude. Play it. But look up a quick character creation guide first. You don't need a walkthrough, but you do need some tips or you're going to fuck up your party. So yeah, two thumbs up. Dark Sun Shattered Lands. Woo! Okay, bye.